Okay, right, let's take a look at this June 2002 hire paper here. So, the first thing we need to do is uh, to read the article. So, we've got this Earth Watch Times article. There's four lines here, and then we've got a, uh, a map that we need to be looking at. So, let's just spend a few minutes looking over that, then, please. So, we're looking at Pakistan, flooding in July, heavy <coughs> rainfall, 200 millimetres in a 24 hour period leaving 1,700 people dead, 1.8 million homes destroyed, and severe flooding. And what we need to do is to look at the key down the bottom here, and the dark area here is denoting where we've got severe flooding, and we can see those pockets of black, okay, which are showing us where the severe flooding has actually taken place. Okay? So let's turn ourselves over then and take a look at the first question, which is obviously going to relate to that. So the first question says, describe the distribution of severely flooded areas shown in figure 2A. So we're doing the distribution of severely flooded areas on that picture again. So what we need to do, we need to flick over then and just remind ourselves whereabouts those uh, severely flooded areas are. So what we do notice is that it seems to be that the severely flooded areas are actually following the, the river here. So we've got the river Indus, okay, we've got severely flooded areas running down the river Indus, okay, here and here. And we've also got severe flooding around the um, juncture here, which we obviously call a confluence where the rivers actually meet. And we've also got some severe flooding here at this uh, confluence between these two rivers. We have got a key, okay, at the bottom here, giving us um, the distance in kilometres, okay, and we've also got uh, places named on this map as well. So what we need to do when we're describing a distribution, therefore, is to um, use that key and use these names to help us do that. So let's have a go at that now then, shall we? So let's describe that distribution. So It seems to be uh, linear along the river, and you need to name the river, so I'm going to get you to do that. Okay, so we're talking about the Indus. You need to mention the confluence, and there are two confluences, okay, where there's uh, severe flooding. You need to talk about how many kilometres that flooding goes on for, and you need to start uh, place naming as well. Okay? So it's linear along the rivers, rivers. it's found in those two confluences. How long is that flooding going on for? Okay, is it a few kilometres or is it 500 kilometres to a certain confluence and then is it another 300 kilometres on from there? And you need to be place naming. So, you know, just east of whatever city, up to whatever city. So you need to place name. So flooding seems to start near Peshawar, about 500 kilometres down to the, the confluence. It then continues flooding down the River Indus for another three or 400 kilometres We've also got flooding here at the confluence of the River Jhelum and Chenab as well, okay, which is here. So you're using the map to help you describe. So you have about three minutes or so to do that in the exam.
Right, we're going to do an easy question now. I know some of you are trying to finish that off. State the main causes of the flood. Well, we're looking at uh, physical reasons here. The main physical, natural reason, the primary natural reason for flooding is uh, always heavy rainfall. In fact, if we go look, look back at that, it says here, as I mentioned earlier, the country received 200 millimetres of rainfall in a 24-hour period. So the answer to that question is actually pretty straightforward. The main cause of the flooding was a primary uh, natural cause of he very heavy rainfall in a short space of time, so 200 millimetres in 24 hours. Okay? So, a few notes there to, to help you develop your, um, your sentence. <coughs> well, outlining how flooding has ruined over 280,000 hectares of cotton fields, again, that's a direct quote from... Um, the, the newspaper article. So a bit of common sense here really. Okay, so how would that flooding, that very heavy heavy rainfall ruin a crop? Okay, well obviously some points to help you here is a two mark question. We need to be talking about the fact that um, plants will drown. Yeah? So they're gonna drown, they've got no oxygen if they're underwater. They could be uh, literally washed away. covered in silt, and uh, as we know, when we get heavy flooding, the sewage backs up as well, so we could also <coughs> say that um, we could have chemicals and sewage on or over these crops as well, okay? But basically, they're going to be drowned, they're going to be washed away, and they're going to be covered in silt, okay? CO2, so no oxygen. They have no oxygen because they've been covered in water and plants need, they need CO2. CO2 and oxygen. Next question, four marker then, and it reads, um, soft engineering can reduce the effects of flooding. So essentially what we need to do here is focus on our soft engineering methods. If you mention any hard engineering methods, obviously we're going to lose our four marks here. So soft engineering reduces the effects of flooding. So bear in mind it's four marks. You've probably got the idea that you need to um, give example one and talk about it, example two, and talk about it, about how it actually reduces uh, flooding. So soft methods, as you are aware, a couple of uh, obvious ones would be afforestation. So in, in other words, um, planting a forest or woods along the um, river valley. Okay. Obviously, you're not going to get two marks for just saying that. You need to say how forestation works. So you need to be talking about how the trees intercept rainfall. Okay, how they break runoff down the valley slopes. And another good one that we've looked at is washlands. In other words, allowing the floodplain to flood. So it gives the water somewhere to go and it stops the flooding downstream. Okay? What does it say? Washroom. Okay? So basically then, we've got afforestation, we need to talk about how afforestation works, a couple of key words to then, it intercepts the rainfall, OK, 
okay? So it soaks that rainfall up. It breaks up the runoff. If you've got water running down the slope, those roots are gonna take that water in. They're gonna break that runoff coming down straight into the river. So it gives you a couple of ideas how to develop that. You've then got uh, washlands, okay? And those washlands are essentially areas upstream of the river which uh, you allow to flood. And if, it, if you allow those areas to flood, it stops flooding downstream, okay? So if you imagine, if you've got your, um, your town here, okay, and you've got your river running this way, if you allow the river to flood here, on the washlands, by the time the river gets down to your, your town, the velocity is reduced, you've got less uh, discharge, therefore that area is less likely to flood. Right then, just give you another few seconds to finish that off. Okay. Right, moving on to the next question then, over the next page. We've got to study this figure. Obviously we've got a blank box here, so it's obvious they're going to ask at some stage to do some kind of diagram here. So we look at this, this is obviously uh, a river meander. We can see the river obviously is flowing in this direction. We look, I'm looking at these arrows and I'm saying to myself straight away that these are arrows not only showing the direction of the river travel but also showing us where the fastest water is running. The fastest water always runs on the uh, outside bend. So where I've just crossed there, that will be the fastest running water. And the slowest running water is always on the inside bends. If I look here, I can see some kind of shading, which is showing me that that's uh, probably a slip-off slope due to deposition. Okay? So that's what I see straight away. So I need to obviously turn over, there's no actual question there. I turn over, and I've got some uh, simple questions. So what do the arrows show? on figure 2b, so we've already said, haven't we, that that's actually showing the direction of river travel, but also more importantly, it's showing the fastest flowing water, okay? So direction of flow and the fastest water as well, okay? <coughs> So direction flow and the fastest water. Then it goes back to the shaded area in box one was caused by what process? Well, we know it's a slip-off slope, and slip-off slopes are caused by deposition, aren't they? Yeah, so it's a slip-off slope caused by deposition. Okay which you could actually add is caused by the slowest running water. Okay? And if you turn over again, that's just, as we said here, the slowest running water is always on the inside bends, slowest coming down here on this inside bend. Therefore, you've got deposition because the river can't uh, hold its suspended load, so it dumps it, deposits it. Okay. Right, moving on to the, um, the last question here then, we've got in box two, okay, uh, draw a label diagram to show how the meander may develop over time. Okay, so we need to obviously do that here, in this box here. Alright, so we know that um, if we go through the process, we know that this area here could become uh, an oxbow lake at a later stage. So we know that that could become an oxbow lake at a later stage. However, there is a stage in between, which is why does it become an oxbow lake? And we know that the fastest running water here and the fastest running water here, you will actually get erosion that will continue in this direction and erosion that will continue in this direction. And eventually, this will actually be broken through. So water will start to uh, flow down here, okay, because it will actually break through because of that erosion, yeah? We also know that once it's broken through, okay, that this area here 
will not have very much flow at all because most of the water will be coming uh, straight down this way and a little bit will be trickling through here. And because um, we always get deposition on the slowest flowing uh, parts of the river, which are on the sides, we'll start to get deposition building up on the side here, which will eventually cut that, get deposition here down the sides, which will eventually cut that off. So what I would suggest we do for our, our diagram is we could either draw a oxbow lake and describe how it's done, or we could do the in-between process. So I personally would draw the river having cut itself through. I've there got my beginnings of a um, oxbow lake, okay? And what I need to do is to annotate that now. What I need to do is to annotate that now, okay? So I've got the direction of water travel. I'm gonna mention here and here, which would obviously be here and here, that uh, erosion has actually breached the swan's neck. Okay. What we call the swan's neck. Okay. We've got water now taking the quickest route. We've got deposition. Deposition occurring here and here. <coughs> that starts to cut the bend off, and obviously that will build up, and this is our oxbow lake forming. So I've mentioned a few key, key words here like um, erosion, swan's neck, I've got deposition here, I can mention that because it's in the slowest flowing part of the river on the sides here, obviously the fastest flowing water is going to be here. I've mentioned obviously the Oxbow Lake, so I've got my key words, I've got my diagram, you've got a bit more time than me to do something a bit more uh, special than that to get your three marks. Well, I'll give you a bit of time to come back to that and finish that off, because obviously I don't want to keep pausing too much. Right, so we can come back and finish those off in a bit more detail in a moment. So we've got a, a, another classic question here. We've seen a similar question beforehand. So you've got to choose a river that you've studied and explain how that river is being managed. Now, there's a whole load of different rivers you can actually use. You can look at the River Yangtze. You can look at the, uh, the Mississippi River. Or you can keep it small. And the river we actually have looked at as a kind of small case study in, in England was obviously the River Valencia, so that's the one I'm going to use, which is in Boscastle, which is in Cornwall. All right, so that's what. So it's not the River Boscastle; it's the River Valencia and also the River Jordan as well so in Boscastle. So don't say it's the River Boscastle. You that's skipped, that's skipped, wrong. You skipped the question. Okay, it's the River Valencia, Boscastle, Cornwall. So how's this river being managed then? Okay, it does say explain. It doesn't just say note it, it says you've got to explain. So you're going to have to write down what the method is, and then you're going to have to write down how that method actually works. All right? Now this is a bit of a gift to be quite honest with you. So if you remember, going back to one of the uh, earlier questions, was suggest how soft engineering can reduce the effects of flooding. Yeah? Well, one of those, which is washlands, is exactly what they've done on the River Valencia. So we can almost take that and actually put it as part of our, part of our answer. There's nothing wrong with you, you actually doing that. So let's go back to this then. So we can talk about 
Um, wasp planes. Okay, I'm not going to write anything. <coughs> Not to write anything there because obviously you've got that information in a previous answer. So you need to just, you need to explain how wash planes work. Okay? So how do they work? Okay, and how do they actually work? We know how they work. It's about <coughs> allowing the land to flood flood naturally upstream. Okay, and that takes the pressure off downstream which will stop that river flooding. So Boz Castle will be safe because the river's already flooded upstream. Okay, so that's a soft method. So you can um, develop that. Right, there's also been some channelisation around Boz Castle as well, so the river Valencia has been channelised. So what they've done there, they've um, made the river straight, okay, to try and get rid of the, the water quicker. They've made it wider and they've made it deeper. And the idea is that allows the river to take more water and to get it out of the Boz Castle area quicker, okay? And that is obviously a um, a hard method. The bridges as well. The bridges have been um, redesigned in Bos Castle. Okay, so instead of having these um, small bridges, stone bridges like this, which this area